is a presentation of the Christian Television Network. Now here's Sheriff Don. Hello and welcome everybody to Joy Junction in this happy little town that I know you're going to have a good time at today because we've got some fun games. Deputy Les has been working on some, oh boy, wait till you see them. Let's meet our first two contestants right now, all right? Come on right up here, contestants. And if you'll just stand right by me over here and we'll introduce you to everybody at home, all right? And who do we have here? My name is Clayton Newton and I'm, and I'm 10 years old and I'm in fourth grade. Great. And where do you go to school, Clayton? Faith Community. Oh, right. Do they give you any homework at that school? A lot of it. A lot of it? Oh, now, aren't you glad they do? Mm, a little. Be honest. Just a little. Huh? How long does it take you to do your homework at night most of the time? About 15 minutes. Oh, that's not long at all. How much time do you spend watching television? <laughs> More than 15 minutes? Yeah, I thought so. All right. Let's meet your opponent over here. And what is your name? My name is Joel Martin, and I'm 10 years old. And I'm in fourth grade, and I go to Faith Community Christian School. All right, Joel, that's great. And what do you like best about school? What's the easiest subject for you, put it that way? Science. Is it? Science? You, would, would you like to be a scientist when you get out of school? No. No? <laughs> do you have any idea what you would like to be or do? No. No? What do you like to do in your spare time? Play football. All right. Would you like to play football when you get out of school or something? Yeah. Yeah, man, that'd be a nice job, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. All right, you've met our contestants. Now let's show you what nice awards they'll receive for being on Joy Junction today. Each contestant will receive a beautiful full-color T-shirt to remember their exciting visit to Joy Junction. Today's winners will receive a beautiful Joy Junction watch with the letters PGF to remind them that it is always time to put God first. Back to you, Sheriff Don. All right, boys, we'd like you to sit down right here, and Deputy Les has a couple of buckets of ice cubes. Sit right down here, Joel. Attaboy. He's got a couple of buckets of ice cubes. Somehow, some of his marbles got all mixed up in those buckets, and he'd like you to pick them out and put them in the little bowl beside it there, okay? So now that you know what to do, the only problem is he wants you to do it with your feet and not with your hands. So when I say go, you begin to see who gets the most marbles in their bowl. On the mark, on your mark, get set, go. Dig into them. All right, there he's got one already. Yeah. He's got two over here. Got, oh, almost. There you go. Oh, <laughs> come on, get him out of there. Oh, my goodness, he's got four over here. Oh, four for the red side so far. Four for the red side. Oh, there's one over here and five over here. All right, just a few seconds more. Just a few seconds more. All right, time, time is up, time is up, and it looks like the red side with the coldest feet has two, four, six marbles in their bowl to three marbles on the blue side. Let's hear it for the red side. And boys, you can see it. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> that was a fun game. So Pastor much. Wilson, it looks like you're on your way to a picnic. You're right. I'm on my way to the annual Children's Day church picnic over at the park. Oh, good. Hey, well, that's, that's great. I hope you all have a good time over there today. Yeah, I hope you um, come on over. Um, I'll try to do that. I'm sure you'll be going, Marty. Oh, sure, he'll be there. As a matter of fact, he had the responsibility of inviting everyone else. He sent out all the invitations, and I'm so glad he did that. If it wasn't for Marty, no one would be there. Uh-oh. Uh, what is it, Marty? I, well, you see, I, uh, it's like this, Ron. I, uh, Marty, what's wrong? 
Turn on. I forgot to send out those invitations. You didn't. Yeah, I did. I was going to do it on Monday, but I went over to Scott's house to play soccer, and then on Tuesday I went over to Randy's house to see his new bicycle, and, oh, you know, it was one thing or another all week. What am I going to do? Marty, this is terrible. Now no one knows about the picnic. Oh, what am I going to do? Wait a minute. I have an idea. Mr. Petion, could I get yes. you to help me out of this situation? Well, what's the problem? Situation? Well, is... I was thinking maybe you could make a big sign to go across City Hall telling all the kids to come to the church picnic. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. Why hey, not? I got another idea. If you can make me a little sign, I'm thinking of something, and I'm going to go to my shop, and I'll come back and make me a little sign. Okay, okay, okay we'll make okay. a little one for you. All right. Ron, I got to go home and get on the telephone and start calling kids to come. Uh, that's a good idea, Marty. I'll help you out. Let's go. Yeah, oh, boy. Looks like we kind of got into a little bit of a problem uh, with Marty not taking that responsibility seriously. Responsibility is important, and we should take responsibility seriously and do what we've been asked to do and what we say we'll do, right, all the time. Right now, we have somebody very special. She takes her responsibility seriously. She's going to sing a beautiful song for us. Here's Sarah Eden singing beautiful. pretty. If you put it in the ground and you water it, you know, God will take this old plain bulb, will make it sprout, and then turn it into something beautiful like these flowers right here. He can do that with a plain old bulb and do that with you and with me. Beautiful. over here blame uh, Randy and Jeff for those problems he had, Sheriff Don. You know, sounds like Marty had a, a, a popular disease. He he only wants to do things when he gets around to it. You ever heard that, round <laughs> yeah, to it? I well, I found Marty's round to it right here. See this? <laughs> Marty's little round to it. <laughs> you know what? I, I remember a Bible story in Exodus chapter 32 that's a lot like what Marty was talking about. See, Moses was up on top of the big old Mount Sinai, and God was giving him the Ten Commandments. He'd been up there about 40 days, and uh, people started to ask him, 
Well, I wonder if he's going to come down again. I mean, when is he coming back? Maybe he's dead. Maybe he's gone. You know what? They kind of forgot that God had brought them out of Egypt and slavery and across the Red Sea and all of that. So they said, look, we need, we need a God we want to worship. So they got a hold of Moses' brother, Aaron, and said, now, Aaron, we know you, better, you, you know how to do things with metal and gold and stuff like that. And what we want you to do is we want you to, to make us an idol that we can worship. Aaron said, okay, 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 don't bug me in. I will do it. He said, now you bring all your jewelry. You bring your earrings, and you bring your necklaces, and you bring your bracelets, and, and we're going we're gonna to do something with it. And the Bible says that he put it in a big melting pot, and then he got it all melted down, and he took it and he hammered it out. And it said he made a golden calf as he hammered it out in this beautiful golden calf. Well, about the time they all got to worshiping this thing, Moses came down off the mountain. Now, he was a bit upset about this point in time. He got downright angry. And he went over to Aaron and he said, Aaron, what in the world did you do this? Aaron said, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. You know, all these people made me do it. He said, and the funniest thing happened, Moses. He said, we just threw all the gold in the fire and out popped this golden calf. That's what he says right there in the Bible. You know. Moses then took that golden calf and he ground it up into fine powder and he sprinkled it in the water and made him drink it. That's how angry not only Moses but God was. You know what? When you do something wrong, don't blame your brother and sister. Don't blame your friend next door. The Bible talks about responsibility. You've done something wrong, you take the responsibility and say, you know, I was wrong and I'm sorry for it. You know, you might surprise mom and daddy every once in a while when you do that. It's also good for grown-ups to say, I blew it too, and take the responsibility. That's good for those little guys and us big guys as well. And tell you what, don't you go away. We've got a lot more right here on Joy Junction when you come back, okay? You stay tuned. <laughs> and these are my friends. Hey! This is Take Two with Jesus, and we're here to tell you today that you are not alone. That's right, even when you feel alone and like no one cares, God is always there. When you go to school, even on the very first day, God is there too. On days when you feel sad and alone like no one cares, God is there every step you take. If you're tired of feeling sad and alone, and you want to know God's with you every step you take, Repeat this prayer after me with my Take Two friends. Dear God, Dear God, Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus. I accept you, Jesus. I accept you, Jesus. As my Savior and very best friend. As my Savior and my very best friend. Thanks, God. Thanks, God. Amen. Amen. That's great. Now that you've accepted Jesus as your very special BFF, that means best friend forever. Here's a little rhyme that'll help you remember that God is with you always. Strength, courage, don't be discouraged. Don't forget to take two with Jesus every day. Bye-bye. Hey, just on. Just on. Just on. Oh, just you got my sign? Right, I got the finishing, well, look, finishing touches hey, on this what, what is that, Professor? Uh, this, oh is my my, this is Professor Clothhopper's Aerial Advertising Company. Aerial yeah. Advertising. Look what he's got Professor's, there. well, it says it right on there. Church Picnic, Professor's Aerial Advertising Incorporated. Right. <laughs> Tie that right on there for me. While I hold me the, while, on yeah, while I hold the balloons, yeah. Okay. So I'll show you what we're going to do. Okay. You guys are really trying to help Marty out, oh, aren't yeah, you? Oh, yeah, he needs some okay. help. Okay. Now, watch this here. Okay. Now, watch this here. We're going to blaze it up. Let's right? see. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Well, what's that going to be up there for, Professor? Look at that. Look at that. Wow. Look Getting that. way, way. Oh, I know. Everybody all over town can see it now yeah. to tell them that there's a picnic. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. What's going out there? Look at that. <laughs> oh, there it is. Hey, Marty's going to appreciate that. All right. While well, you let everybody know, I'm going to let everybody know who our next two contestants are. So come on right up here, contestants and we'll introduce them to you at home also. Here we go for our blue team. Come on right over here. 
And you are? Rachel McMahon. I'm in sixth grade and I'm 12 years old. Okay, Rachel, good to have you with us today. Is your team ahead or behind right now? Behind. Uh-oh, then that means you've got to really catch up, right? Think you got a good chance of winning this next one? Yes. Good. I like a positive attitude. Do you uh, get to read your Bible very much, I hope? Good. Do you have a favorite verse? Um, John 3.16. Do you like John 3.16? Can you say it for me? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Terrific. That's one of the greatest verses in the entire Bible. And who have we here? I'm Joy Dunlis. I'm in fourth grade and I'm 10 years old. Good, Joy. And good to have you, too. And we're going to see how well you can do over there in just a minute in our next contest. But tell me what you like to do in your spare time. Read. Hey, good. If you could vacation anywhere in the world, where would you like to go? Someplace you've never been. I don't know. You don't know? How would, have you ever been to Hawaii? Yes. No? How would you like to go see Hawaii? I'd love That'd be to. Kind of <laughs> or have you ever been out of the United States at all? Yes. No? Okay. How far have you been away from uh, Florida, let's say? North Carolina. North Carolina. That's a beautiful place, too, isn't it? Yes. All right. It's good to have both of you here. Let's go over and get in the box over there and get ready to see how well you can answer some questions, okay? We're going to be asking you some questions, and the answer will either be wise or foolish, okay? So uh, you just, if it's wise, you push your button with a W. If it's foolish, you push the button with the F, and we'll see who's going to win or if we'll end up in a tie, all right? Here we go. Was the man who built his house upon the sand wise or foolish? All right, I'm sorry, the answer is foolish, so we have one point there for the blue team. All right, next question. Was it wise or foolish for the little boy to give his lunch to Jesus? Wise or foolish? Oh, it was wise for him to give that, his lunch to Jesus because he saw a great miracle done when Jesus fed the 5,000 people, remember? Okay, blue side, you're in the lead. Were Joshua and the Israelites wise or foolish to walk around the walls of Jericho when God told them to? Were they wise or foolish to walk around the walls? Quickly push a button. All right, you both got that one right. Yes, they were very wise. And the walls fell down and the enemy was conquered. Was Moses' mother wise or foolish to put baby Moses in the basket in the bulrushes? Both of you got it right. Very good. Sure, she was wise because the princess found him and saved his life. Was it wise or foolish for the rich man to build more barns to hoard his wealth? Was it wise or foolish? It was foolish, yes, absolutely, because the Bible says this night, or God said this night, thy soul shall be required of thee. All right? Is it wise or foolish to obey your parents? Oh, you both better get that right. <laughs> of course, it is wise to obey our parents. Was Judas wise or foolish to betray Jesus? Was Judas wise or foolish to betray Jesus? Quickly, push a button. All right, time. He, we both got it right on time. He was foolish, and he felt so guilty afterwards. The Bible says he went out and hanged himself. Was Noah wise or foolish to build the ark? Yes, he was wise, and that's the last one we have time for. And it is the blue side with eight and the red with five. So let's hear it for the blue team. 20 more points for the blue team. All right. Eric, there there it time. Oh, yeah. Hey, we, we got the, the uh, sign ready. Oh, here. you got it finished. Great. You know, I was thinking, I know Marty said maybe we should put it on the, the city hall. Yes, but, he did. But I think maybe more people might see it over here. You know? Okay. Wherever, maybe, wherever uh, you Deputy think. Less. Could I'm you help sure. me uh, put this up here? Deputy I'm sure he'll appreciate it up just, uh, yeah. just wherever yeah. you want to put it, where everybody will see it. All right. Oh, that's great. Hey, that's great. I know he feels so bad that he didn't tell all the guys and girls oops, about oops. that about that picnic. Maybe we'll get it there. That can stay. Yeah, we'll get it. <laughs> all right. Very good. All right, that'll remind them all. The children's church picnic is today, so everybody's got to remember and come to the church picnic. Hey, I want to tell you something or show you something about a little guy, our little friend Jot, who learned the importance of taking responsibility well by hitting a home run that went a little farther than it should. You watch, okay?
Goodbye, Mr. Crabtree. Judd? Judd? Judd, didn't you hear me call? Hey, son, what's wrong? I don't feel very good. Oh, what's the trouble? Well, we were playing ball, and it hit Mr. Crabtree's window, and I... I... Ran away, Judd? All the others did, too. Well, who broke the window? I did. Uh-oh. What do you think you should do? Go see Mr. Crabtree and tell him I'm sorry. Okay. Will you... will you go with me? If it'll help. Maybe I could give Mr. Crabtree all my allowance to pay for the window. You'll feel much better if you do. You know, Jot... The Bible says you shall do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. I'm proud of you, son. All right, it's time for our final contest. The score right now is tied. It's 20 to 20. We have Joel for the red side and Rachel for the blue side. Let's see how well you do. Just push that button if you know the answer and your light will light up. Your buzzer will ring and it will also block out your opponent's light and buzzer. Okay, here we go. When Adam sinned, did he take the responsibility or blame someone else? Okay, red side? He took the responsibility? No, I'm sorry, he didn't. He blamed Eve. Remember, he said, oh, the woman you gave me, she made me eat that. <laughs> he blamed someone else. No points yet. Who am I? I am a very beautiful woman. I took the responsibility of going before the king regarding a bad man named Haman. Red side? Esther? Esther, yes, you are right. There's 10 points for the red side. Each correct answer is worth 10 points now, so it is 30 to 20, red side in the lead. Noah and his sons took on the responsibility of building a huge ark. How many people were saved from the flood in that ark? Red side? Five. No, I'm sorry, blue side, do you know? Mm. All right, time, the answer is eight. Noah and his wife and his three sons and their wives made eight. Can you spell responsibility? Can you spell that word? Try it, blue sign. R-E-S-P-O-N-S-I-B-I-L-T-I-S. No, I'm sorry you missed it. Do you know how to spell it, red sign? 
Okay, I'll, I'll try. R E B. Spelling. No, I'm sorry. Let me give it to you. R E S P O N S I B I L I T Y. Do we have the responsibility to tell others about Jesus? Red sign? Yes. Yes, we certainly do. We're told that in many scriptures. Who has the responsibility of obeying the Ten Commandments? Blue sign? Us. All of us, absolutely, yes. Okay. While Moses was on Mount Sinai receiving the Ten Commandments from God, Aaron was acting ir irresponsible below by building a what for the people to worship? Red sign? A golden calf. That's a golden calf. You're right. And that's 10 more points for the red side. So red side wins it 50 to 30. Let's hear it for the red team. Hey. Red side, you are the winner. We can't forget to talk about the mailbox club. Oh, you're I right, Professor show, yeah. Claude Hopper. Yeah. And you, oh, okay. you're going to bring the balloons yeah. down, huh? Oh, All right. right. I want to see that. Okay. Yeah, Professor. How did you do that? Huh? How did you do that? Oh, it's one of my inventions. I got you. Oh, oh, oh. Well, you, know, you are yeah, clever. Oh, and yeah. look at that. It's mailbox, mailbox club. club. Right. Oh, oh, oh. Can you open it up? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there is that. A, it is, is a mailbox right. lesson in there. It sure right. is. Great, Professor. Yeah. That gives me opportunity to remind yeah. everybody to boy. join the mailbox, mailbox club. Right. It's a neat way to study God's Word, the Bible, at home, and we'll mail it to you absolutely free. It doesn't cost anything. We right. just want you to learn and study God's Word at home. You see, there's lots of neat stories and pages to it here and questions in the very back page, and you answer those questions from the Bible and by using these lessons right. and fold it up, it makes into a, a real neat envelope, doesn't it, Professor? Right, sure and not. you just well, put a stamp on right. it and I'll mail it back. back to us, back. put it in your mailbox, right. and we'll send you the next lesson. Look what else is in there. Oh, hey, that. that's, I'm glad you, yeah, oh, you think of everything, oh, Professor yeah. Clyde Hopper. We'll also send you this PGF pad completely free. It's just a neat way to remind you to put God first. And it even has Joy Junction on it, so you'll remember to pray for us too. And you write down all the things that you need to do each day, but most importantly, you need to put God first. We remember to do that. God loves you. He loves you so very, very much, and he wants you to put him first and to take the responsibility in your life for your actions and things you do. We always remember to do that, and remember to attend church, read your Bible, and pray every day, and always remember that PGF reminds us to what? Put God first! Put God first, kids, and we'll see you next week. Now, come on, everybody. It's time to get to the picnic. Let's go, everybody. Hey, come on, come on. Boy, you're on. I almost blew it, didn't I? You certainly did, Marty. If it hadn't have been for a lot of nice, caring friends, it could have turned into a really bad situation. Well, I was really learned my lesson today. I'm going to start taking my responsibility serious and not blaming others and doing what I say I'm going to do. That's great, Marty. I can almost smell those hot dogs cooking now. Let's head over to the park, okay? Okay.